All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today, or in this video, it's just going to be uh, machining work and stuff like that, really. Uh, we've had a few racing videos, and I just wanted to get on with a bit of machining, so uh, we'll get to it. I'll, uh, I'll give you a quick um, show of what's been happening at the workshop. Sam and Graves have started building all the storage area now um so the frame of it's up so this is basically going to be my office in here and then that's all going to be storage for <clears throat> stuff to do with the workshop like car racing parts and tooling and things like that uh the racing stuff's going to be kept at the bottom um so if, well i'll go down here and show you so basically once we've had a move around of everything this is going to be a double door here uh, so we can get the forklift in with the wheels and tyres and stuff like that. The ramp where my race car is, is going to be moved to where the dyno is. The dyno and we've just bought a rolling road, they're going to be outside. We're going to build a purpose built thing for, for out there. Uh, we've got a water leak from the ceiling, so we've got to tackle that. It's started to get the mez floor wet, so we've got to get on with that before the weather changes and it gets a little bit rubbish out there but I managed to find this just over the road actually we kept looking at racking uh, and a guy over the road was clearing out a unit and he said I could have these bays for um, well in fact it's another bay but Graves has nicked a bit of that because I didn't need all of it uh, but 100 quid and it's quite heavy duty so all we've got to do <clears throat> is put some heavier duty slats on where we need it for some of the heavier items this is all the wood for the uh, gas flowing room when we get on with that and then basically uh, this is another part of it and we've put some cheaper racking down there we've got another bay to go down there uh, and I'm going to just stack up all my racing car parts onto that because um, we've we, we got stuff everywhere yeah, this is going to be the office. And then what was going to be my office in my like meeting room, what we call it, is now going to be the sim room. And we're going to have two arcade machines in here. Um, but we've got to we've got to finish that off. I'm going to turn the car around because I don't know, sorry the sim round because I don't like it that way. It feels quite weird. <coughs> No one can keep up with Sam on the sim. It's frustrating as all. He's so fast. Um, right, okay. So now I'm in the head shop today. Um, I've got to do a job for Thruxton Motorsport. One of their uh, motorsport cars dropped an exhaust valve seat. And uh, so I've put one seat in it and I've cut the inlet just in case it had any damage there. But when I was looking, at the seats that was still in there which i've now taken out there's absolutely there's no depth to them so there's not really anything that can hold that seat in so i spoke to andy at thruxton motorsport and said i you know if i was you i'd put four exhaust seats in it um and he said yeah go ahead and do that so i'm going to switch the machine on um set all the tooling back up all the cutters back up to fit these other three seats and then just cut them all reface everything so i know that it's all good for him um, my myra drives actually failed on my um myra seat cutter so if there's anyone out there that's got a myra drive unit that i can buy uh, yeah please get in touch because uh, at the minute i'm doing it all by hand um or using the pro valve and I still really like this machine for putting valve seats in I think I'm just that used to it that I, I prefer to use it to be fair um, I mean the pro valve is fantastic and, and mega accurate and and once I get used to using it for putting seats in the Myra probably won't get used a lot but at the minute I still I still use that a lot really um, so yeah if anyone out there has got a Myra, Myra drive kicking around that they uh, they don't need then please get in touch right so the first thing I've got to do is grab a couple of seats which I've already got them out 
these are just a, a standard style lead free seat it's scented steel so it's like a pressed powdered steel basically so that's the depth we're going to go to I'm gonna to have to trim a bit off the top once the seats fitted so it will be just a ever so slight bit smaller than that but in comparison to what was being used I mean you can see the difference I mean I don't know whoever fitted them why they thought they would be good enough I don't know um, but there we are I'll um, I'll bore the seat out to take I'll bore the uh, the bore of the cylinder head out to take that bigger seat and uh, get that installed and drop them to the right height. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get some measurements of the valve seat that I'm using. So I'm going to measure the OD first uh, and then I'm going to minus out what clearance that I want. However, what I'm not going to do is bore straight to that size um, for the simple fact that the tooling can move um, and because the fit of this is very very important um, I mean we're going to go and freeze the seat and I will warm the head up as I'm fitting the the seat what we don't want is if the tool moves and makes the bore of the cylinder head oval or even a thou takes a thou more out than what it should have um, the seat could fall out and we're going to be in a whole world of trouble so um, the best thing to do is to do it in two cuts get it within sort of tenth hour of where I want to be and then finish off the last um, the last cut before I install the, the seat so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm adding the pilot for the setting tool um, which is in here so this is this is a tool setting tool and what I'm going to do is whenever I fit seats I just zero it off the body of the machine because that's what it's set to this is 669 thou this part of the machine so basically when I measure the OD of the seat I minus the 669 thou out of it yeah, and as you can see, that's uh, that's bang on zero. If the camera's picking that up, anyway, it is. Um, right. So now what I'm going to do is just back that off move that away from this 45 degree cutter that's in there and um, take that out put it back up there and then put the new 90 degree cut cutting tool in And then basically I've got the size what I've measured it to. Now I'm going to set the tooling up to take that cut. Um, right now I need to put in the right size pilot for the guide that's too loose and it needs to be a really good fit um, keys and everything away put the setting tool to one side for now because we're going to have to mount the cylinder head into the 
machine because of the angle. A lot of the time you can cut some of the cast iron seats directly off the head, uh, but because the valves are at an angle, we've got to set the angle up into the machine. So we're doing that with this. do is I'll time lapse this all being set up So I've now got the seats fitted to the Pinto cylinder head. Uh, what I'm going to do now is cut the, the seat to within roughly about 10th hour of the depth that I'm looking for. Um, mainly because, because the seats are undressed at the moment, the chances are it might all move slightly one way or the other. So although it's cut imperfect, the valve might not seal. So I'll get them all within 10 thou and then just go over them again just to trim them to get them all perfect. So the machine is self-centered. I'm now just gonna lock the handle on. And then what I'm gonna do is cut the seat until I can see the actual 45 degrees about 1.5 mil thick. And then what I'll do to get them perfect is then just put um, a last cut on it, but get but get it then where I could just see the third angle cutting, and then I know that they're all bang on the same. Just starting to put the 45 on now. So what I'm doing now is just resetting the servos in the head of the machine so that's basically all centered now. Uh, one more seat to rough out which is this one here. So just really carefully fit the Centronic into the guide, lock the magnet, hit the self-centering button and then the servos in the machine calculate the exact center of the valve guide. that's it that's all four of them roughed out so now I've got to basically just trim all of the exhaust seats in 
So I'm going to reset the machine and then just do one at a time. straight away it's cutting more off one side so now I'm just taking it nice and easy just watching the, the seat form and I can just see the start now of my top angle so I'm going to leave that at that And that's it, I'll finish these off and I'll show you the end result. Well, that's the Pinto cylinder head all finished. Or well, what we've got to do to it. So we've put seats in the four cylinders for the exhaust because obviously the, um, well not obviously, because the seats that was in it was too thin. One of them fell out and I just thought that the others was too thin. I'll show you that again, because they're here. Which are quite tiny compared to what we've put in. You can see the depth of the ones that I've put in um, and then I vac tested the inlets and the inlets didn't hold any vacuum so I've just trimmed all the inlets in as well and then the two valves that my customer supplied from Thuxton Motorsport Centre I've um, I've just given them a face just so I knew that it was a good angle to um, to test the vacuum against so that's that job all done and we're gonna move on to something else um he's collecting this today but while I've, this is i don't really work in here too much at the moment i'm still doing most of the head work over the other side but uh being in here i like it in here i'm just desperate to get this flooring done now so hopefully the next time we record in here uh things like this will be trimmed in and we'll have some flooring down and hopefully some bits on the wall um need to get the there's a big copper, big spider where the camera is. I need to get that sorted as well. So, um, so yeah, it's nice to work in here, but it's still not absolutely perfect. We've not even got the light switch on the wall yet. I can't do gas flowing in here yet. So that's another job that we need to get finished off. So um, yeah, lots to do in here. So a job that I did a little while ago on a few videos back was fixing a Ford Model T cylinder head, which was cracked. Uh, customer's been back today with a radiator from it and basically he's broke this part of the cast iron out so this is a, a 30s item 1930s item and with it being cast iron I need to try and work a way of repairing that so what I'm going to do what I'm going to try and do is to get some cast iron from something else and then basically try and weld this half up first then this half um, with cast iron rods so my first job is to just neaten up all of this to make it easier to to make something out of So I've prepped the hole in the bottom of the radiator and because it's cast iron I need cast iron to weld in there uh, <clears throat> so what I've done and we'll see if you guys can guess what it is I'll, I'll say what it is at the end of the video but I've got this bit of cast iron here um, 
if you can leave in the comments section below what you think it is and then i will answer it at the end of the video so actually i suppose that doesn't really help but anyway let's do it um yeah so i've cut that bit of cast ready and now what i'm going to do is dress it to make it fit in that hole and what's good about it is because it's eye section i could basically shape that part and that part once it's installed to make it hopefully flow with what was originally there. bit hot I mean this is going to be nowhere near but well, I'm going to keep checking it in stages So I've chopped the bit of cast roughly to the right size. It sticks out here and there, but that's exactly what I want so I can shape it to the right size. So what I'm gonna try and do now is to just cast weld it just in a couple of places to then start to shape it. So me and Graves have just uh, put some water in it and it's got a tiny little pinhole leak there and it's leaking from this join just here so i'm gonna art weld a bit more weld in there um these are cast iron welding rods that i'm using so this is a cast iron neck it's a lump of cast iron in here and i'm using cast iron welding rods to weld it with and i've heated it up as well just for anyone wondering but we'll get these bits filled and then we'll water test it again So now I've welded it, I'm going to break off around here. We are producing a flux based mess basically. I've blown another hole in it, I can see it straight away. I think I've got it a bit too hot. So I'm gonna tidy that up. And just fill that there. I've blown an hole straight through that. Oh dear. Test. 
So that's this radiator all fixed. Uh, I've, we've water tested it and there was no leaks from it at all. But what I've done now <clears throat> is I've just carefully gone over it with um, a glue that the body shop next door used, which uh, not that it leaks, it doesn't leak, it's fine. But I thought if I just go over the weld, it will just be like an extra bit of protection. So. I could go and ring my customer now and let, let him know that we've fixed this because he wants to use the um, the Model T at a show at the weekend in Newbury. So he's got a few days now to get it all fixed up, get it running and uh, prep it ready for the show. I nearly forgot to say, the bit that I used to fill this was the beam of a Vauxhall Conrod. So anyone that said Conrad, well done, you're bang on.